welcome to another set of lectures. This time we'll be talking a little more about SANG in terms of some of the other interesting um, description and the facts that we haven't quite dealt with yet. Namely, we're going to be talking about intensity, which has to do with volume, and amplitude, which we seem to have not talked about very much. And then we'll move to the Doppler effect, which is actually very prevalent, not only with SANG, but with other types of waves as well but we'll demonstrate the principle using SAM. So the first thing we're going to discuss is the question of what determines how loud the SAM is, the volume of the SAM. Um, we've talked about how, well, that probably depends on the amplitude of the pressure SAM wave, but what is actually more important is the power that comes through. So we actually need to use power and that's you remember power is related to the amplitude by the amplitude square. But what is actually the thing that matters, it's not even power, it's intensity. Oops, intensity, which is I is equal to P over A. What, what area are you talking about and what is why does this come about? Let's consider we have an ear on this side. And then over here you have your friend that has a pretty big mouth. Ooh, that's not making it look too bad. Your friend who's speaking to you over here. You will notice that if you are further away from your friend, he doesn't sound that loud, but then as you get closer and closer, he sounds louder and louder. But what's happening here? The your friend is speaking at a certain with a certain power coming out of his lung, but then that power as it goes away from its mouth, gets spread out. Roughly speaking, I mean, it can be, you can look at this as part of a spherical wave that we briefly looked at a couple of assignments ago. As you get further away, chances are your area goes up by r square. It's getting spread more and more out. And for the same power spread over a bigger and bigger area, you see that your ear intercept less and less of the original power as you move away. So here you're getting pretty much all of it. Back here you're getting about 50% and less and less and less. And that's why you are going to perceive the sound as quieter because your ear is interrupting less power. Even though this power of the source is the same, everything gets spread out. Another way to look at it is if you consider having, say, a tube to constrict the sound from spreading, you also hear your friend a lot louder much further down the road because the sound hasn't been allowed to spread. So that's why we have to consider the area that the sound power is spread through. And that's why after we normalize, we get this thing called the intensity, which is measure, of course, SI unit watts per meter square. And that's the intensity. As it turns out, however, though, our ears are really amazing things. It can perceive intensity all the way down from 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter square all the way up to times 10 to the 1 watts per meter square before we feel pain. So having this massive range, this is 13 factors of magnitude, 13, that's 1 with 10, 13 zeros behind it, that's what, 10 trillion times difference. So it's usually not as useful to talk about in terms of watts per meter square, but rather we use a log scale. And that's the decibel scale. Decibel scale. D B. And the decibel is defined with the following formula. Some kind of loudness in decibel, it's equal to 10 times log 10 of whatever intensity you have divided by this 
I naught. And what is this I naught? That's the smallest I perceptible by human ear. And that's what we briefly talked about I naught. We're going to use as 1 times 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter square. So looking more closely at the formula, it's somewhat intuitive. It's basically saying for every 10 times increase of the sound intensity, we're going to add 10 in our decibel scale. So that's every 10 times increase is add 10. So every step of 10 is 10 times increase. To get a handle on the decibel scale, I would suggest you perhaps go to Wikipedia and look up um, sound power. You'll find there a good list of various sounds at different decibels. But I just want to note that our ear and our brain also works quite naturally on this logarithmic scale because we do have this big range, once again, trillion times, 13 factors of magnitude range to deal with in terms of intensity. So it's funny to think that our brain is actually very good at doing logarithms, which for some reason we don't learn until grade 12. But in either case, so for example, we have say like a refrigerator, refrigerator, or like a dishwasher, something like that. Those are roughly at 40 decibel dB. But then you have your alarm clock that's at about 80 dB. Well, you kind of feel that maybe, you know, 40 to 80, it's sort of like the alarm clock is about twice as loud as the refrigerator. Not too much of a stretch. Maybe, you know, five or six, maybe 10 times. But really, when you do the math, because of the log scale, every 10 in the log scale is 10 times bigger. So this is, so delta L is 40 dB. So therefore, for every step of 10, we have to multiply by 10. This is the I2 over I1. It's going to be 10 to the 4. It's 10,000 times more intense. Or the alarm clock, but we only feel it as twice. So that just goes to show that our brain and our ear also work more or less with the logarithmic scale. Now that we've seen how it is useful, let's do a couple numerical examples. 